Well, what a fascinating introduction to our barns. I can't help thinking you missed one word, gavelkind. I will enlighten you later, maybe, because I think that would be key to why Kent is so different. Welcome to our barn and to the Great Barn, as we call it, probably built at about 1760 amidst a, an, an agricultural revolution that swept the nation and a barn that reflected the wealth and status of the farmer that was here, together with a, a quite impressive house that you will uh, get a glimpse of later. It's noteworthy that it was constructed using uh, principally second-hand materials. These barn timbers have obviously been used before. So you sit beneath timbers that probably form part of the manor house that was here and in which Henry VIII spent his night, or spent a night, on the way and his progress through Kent, uh, reviewing his warships being built in Tenterton for his navy. So historical timbers that have seen much change and will go on to see much more. Because this barn forms part of what I suppose is a dispersed cluster, but I got a little confused. I'm just looking at my 25-inch map. Um, the, the structure of the buildings we have now is probably as they appeared about 100 years ago. Um, there is a, a cluster of barns here, an oast house beyond, and beyond that are four stall and cattle yards on the top of the hill. So you're talking about a half a mile of buildings with a house in the middle. And the farming in this region was dominated by hops producing the wealth and cattle uh, on, on most of the other ground. In the post-war boom, uh, there were dozens, almost a dozen other buildings on this site. But as technology and mechanization has come along, we have removed most of them to reveal the beauty of the old buildings, and only one of them remains just behind this barn. And it's interesting that that barn, if I reclad it, you would think that was an old one as well. So even in a post-war period, people were still building in traditional style. This barn, I think, demonstrates how buildings can be reused satisfactorily and retain the beauty. It's licensed as a wedding and party venue, and we're restricted to having 18 events per year, which I think is about right for a lovely barn like this. So on 18 Saturday nights, it tends to be that there's a wedding in here, um, and then we can squeeze one or two other functions in here like this on a midday that don't count, fortunately, towards that plan as 18 events running beyond 8 o'clock at night. Um, it's a wonderful self-help wedding venue. People get married here, and we have some really happy venues, uh, happy parties. There are just one or two punch ups. There always are. <laughs> Whole Park Estate, which has been in my family for four generations, has a good record of reuse of farm buildings, I believe. The estate lies within Ashford Borough and Tumbridge Wells Borough Councils, entirely within the high wheeled AONB. And we work with both councils to develop some excellent schemes, some residential and some commercial, there can be no prescriptive answer to what they should be, but key to us is the retaining the ownership to, re to unify the management and control of them in the future. Regretfully, our planning history has not been uh, exemplary, and in the last 12 months I've had two refusals, one with each council, I'm afraid, um, reflecting maybe that we've taken the low-hanging fruit, but also a planning system of ever-increasing complexity and cost that we struggle to match. All these buildings need a flexible approach to their future management, which I'm sure the Kent Farmstead guidance will help provide. It's been 250 years since this barn was put up, and I'm sure that it'll be continuing for many more. From a once great agricultural farm, Holden Place now is all about business and not agriculture. Within a few yards of you are six business units occupied by four different business users. We have a builder and architect, a sign maker, in fact he's just moved out and I'm negotiating to relet his office space, a curtain maker and a tapestry conservation workshop carrying out restoration to the highest possible grade. All these buildings were co converted just a few years ago uh, when standards perhaps were different and we've had to spend quite a lot of time improving them as the years go on, particularly uh, providing internet and power and insulation as the costs of energy rise. We take a very flexible approach to the tenure, and I believe the management of these buildings is almost as important as the, as the user. Uh, we use a licensing system uh, that permits tenants to come and go with, with freedom. And I think I'm noted in the landlord sector for being somewhat progressive. One uh, young man who came and rented a building in this yard uh, said he didn't want the whole place. And I said, well, I can't divide a building. I chalked lines on the floor, and he... Uh, took the first bay and as soon as he's, he took the next bay he paid a little more and on he went down the building and within 18 months he got the whole building 
and uh, everyone was happy. But it's this sort of a, a, in innovative approach to how one copes with the management uh, I think is uh, so important. So I believe our flexible approach has gone far in creating a successful reuse of old farm buildings. But I also just want to make, highlight a few questions for you. Businesses like to be in clusters, so please don't put a building way down a farm track. They want to be with other people, where the sandwich lady calls, where the internet works, and they've got several of them all to do it. The division of ownership, which I mentioned, is key. Many estates wish to retain the freehold, and therefore the management. And I don't think there's any doubt that if you can unify or retain in one form the ownership, it is to the betterment of the visual amenity. The CIL levy is almost crippling on conversion of buildings where the costs are far higher than if you were on a new build, and to then be told we're paying 5% to the CIL really kills it off, and it's just killed a conversion scheme of two barns that we no way can we, met, we can find the, that money to make a return, given that we're not selling it. The VAT issue is an old one, where we've lost out the costs of, of reclaiming it. Building regulations. This building has next to no insulation. Does it matter? I don't think so, on a warm day. Sally was very concerned you were going to be cold here today. Does it matter? No. Would we get away with it now? No, we wouldn't. So do think about the costs of the building regulations that you impose upon it. And utilities. The broadband black spots in this country are everywhere. And Cranbrook, I believe, is one of the worst exchanges. And this road lane is fortunate to have the link uh, going down the lane, a big fat optic cable. But the many farms, there's no broadband at all. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll enjoy your walk around the uh, buildings we're going to do in a minute. The tenants are free to welcome you in. Please don't go and disturb them all. They'll take orders for your curtains. Your tapestry will be restored while you wait. Um, and they'll be pleased to welcome you and show you what they do. Thank you.